Hey, welcome back. So uh, I recently got a comment on one of my uh, easy game mechanic videos from Adam. Uh, thank you for making these concise and straightforward tutorials. Please do one on getting materials from a sprite. So I said, like loading a chest, and Adam replied, I was thinking more like chopping a tree or mining a stone. So what I've got on my layout right now is a player sprite with an eight directional movement. All I've got in the event sheet is the movement controls for the player. I have a basic tree sprite, which is just one frame and a couple of uh, blocks of color. And then a little log, uh, which will be used as a resource. Now, what I want to make happen is the guy to come over to the tree. You can push spacebar to say harvest, then the tree will drop out these little logs, which you can then pick up which will then stack in a little inventory over here. And then when the tree runs out of logs, it will disappear and maybe become a stump. So in fact, yes, let's make it a stump. Add a second frame to make it a stump. Let's just chop off the top. Make sure you set the speed of the animation to zero so it doesn't automatically play. That way we'll automatically stay on frame zero. Now, the next thing we need to do is add a local variable or a variable specific to that tree, which will count how many logs it has. So click the tree, come over to the left hand side, add an instance variable, and then let's call this one logs. And let's give it five. So for example, you can harvest five logs from this tree before it turns into a stump. Now let's go ahead and add some logic to make that happen. So add event, let's say keyboard on key pressed spacebar on key press spacebar, tree, subtract from the logs, one. So now what's gonna happen, you're not gonna be able to see anything, but we can add in a little bit of text here. So double click, add in some text. Uh, I'm gonna call this, just leave it text. Uh, leave the, the thing to text as well. Um, let's say system every tick, and let's get that text to track how many logs that tree has. So we'll say set text to tree and then a dot and then the instance variable we assigned was logs and every tick that's going to set that to how many it has. So if I push space by raise to four, three, two, one, zero. Now let's go back to the event sheet and say that tree and let's compare that number now. We're going to say if the logs are equal to or less than zero we're going to go ahead and say tree. We're going to set your frame to one, which is the stump. There we go. And now it's gone to zero. Now we don't want to be able to keep harvesting logs once the tree is in a stump phase. So we're going to need to add a condition to our spacebar button press. So push C on the keyboard with that highlighted. And we're going to say tree. And we're going to say, we can either say compare frame. So if it's only playing frame zero, but what we're going to do is compare that instance variable again logs. And we're going to say, as long as it's greater than zero, we can go ahead and subtract one, which means that now when we get down to zero, no matter how many times I press the space bar, it's not going to uh, reduce that number anymore. What we now need to do is drop a log once we've chopped that tree. So we're gonna to have to spawn in these objects. Now a good thing that I like to do with these little additional sprites here is add a behavior that says destroy outside of layout because I wanna keep the amount of game objects that are currently in play at any one time to a minimum, um, just, just for performance. So if it's outside of the layout, I want it to just destroy instantly. Um, we're gonna to need to add another behavior to this and that's gonna be the tween because we want it to move out of the tree in a nice natural fashion. So we're gonna add a, tw a tween behavior to that. Um, so now on key spacebar pressed, as long as we've got logs in the tree, we're gonna subtract one and we're gonna add an action that says tree spawn another object. And that object is gonna be the log and it's gonna be on layer one at image point zero. So if we do this now, you can see it pops in, in the middle there. They're all going to overlap, so you're not going to see. There will be five there, but you're not going to be able to see them. What we now need to do is tell the system that when that log is created, we're going to want to tween it away from the tree. So we're going to say log. We're going to come down to tween two properties. 
and that's going to be you can select size scale position we're going to leave it at position and we're going to say the end x position is going to be equal to its current x position which is self dot x and then to move it uh, uh, on the x-axis is left and right so we're going to say plus and we're going to say random which is going to give us a random uh, set of perimeters so we're going to say minus eight pixels which is to the left and then eight pixels which is eight pixels which is to the right so what that's going to do is set it to its current x position and it's going to then set a random um, position on the x-axis between minus X, uh, 8 pixels to the left and 8 pixels to the right, so a 16 pixel range. And on the Y, we're going to say self.y, which is currently where it is. And then we're going to again say plus random, because we don't want them to just go to the same place. <clears throat> and we, or we're going to always want these to move down, so we're going to say plus 8 and then plus 16. So again, you've got that 8 pixel. Oh, we don't need to put the plus in there. 8 and 16, so we're always going to have that 8 pixel. Well, 16, we're going to have an 8 pixel range on it. The time is going to be 0 0.3 seconds. Um, oh, and the ease, which is the, uh, the, the, the movement path, the movement pattern, is going to be um, bounce out. Uh, or bounce in out that might work as well let's have a look there you go and then you've got a little stack of wood just on the floor I think we can probably based on what those did is set them a little bit bigger perimeters so 16 16 and we'll say 16 32 There you go. And now they're dropping out of the tree quite nicely when we attack the tree. Now, we need to make sure that we are close enough to the tree in order for the spacebar action to work because at the moment we could be stood over here, hit the spacebar, and then those logs could just fall out of the tree. So let's add that condition in now, and we can add it into this on spacebar pressed. So let's go ahead and say uh, tree, and we're going to compare... In fact, we're going to go system and we're going to compare two variables. The first variable is going to be the distance. If you just type in distance and we're going to say player dot X player dot Y. And then the second object is going to be the trees X position and the trees Y position. So we're effectively saying if the distance between the player and the tree is less than or equal to 16 then we want something to happen so if we drag that up just above we can click and nest that in underneath that means now if we stood over here we push spacebar we can't chop anything but if we get close enough we can which works quite nicely now we need a way to calculate how many logs we're picking up. We can go ahead and use that text that we set to track how many logs were in the tree. So let's right click, add a global variable, and we're going to call this one logs, which is a resource that the player can, can acquire. Um, we're going to set the initial value to zero. And we're going to say, instead of trees, dot logs we're going to set it to just the global variable logs and that's now going to count how many logs we have uh, add an event we're going to say player on collision with log log destroy system add two logs one which is that global variable and you can see now the issue that we're going to have is if we stood closely to the tree as soon as they spawn I'm going to pick them up instantly and you're not going to see them. So we need to add a condition in that lets the logs fall to the ground before you can collect them. And you can do this a number of ways. The way I'm going to do it is by setting a Boolean variable on this log. Well, it will set to all the logs and I'm going to call that collectible. 
and I'm gonna set it false because when they spawn, I don't want them to be collectible. And now I just need to set a condition now on condition on this player collision with log by pushing C on the keyboard by saying log. And I'm gonna check that Boolean variable is true. So only if that's collectible will I destroy the log and add one. So now that's gonna immediately stop me from picking them up. Now what I wanna do on created is tween and then I'm gonna say system wait and I'm gonna wait for 0.5 seconds, which is enough time for the tween at 0.3 seconds to finish. And then I'm gonna say log, and I'm gonna set that Boolean collectible to true. So when they spawn in, it will be false. But now I can collect them all. And there they are, stacked up there in the top left-hand corner of the screen as five. If you found the tutorial useful uh, or helpful, then please do feel free to drop a like, a thumbs up, and like, share, comment, and all the rest of that good stuff. And if you've got an idea for a future tutorial, you can drop me a comment um, on the YouTube chat or in the Discord, and uh, I will try my best to get that tutorial made. To finish, I'd just like to say a massive thank you and a shout out to my wonderful YouTube Patreons and channel members. Foozle CC, Retro Galaxy, Olivia Bernier, Amari Lewis, Enmark Games, Just Matt, Tor Hammock, Alexanderson, Rob, Martin K, Julian Cruz, Raul Song Gonzalo, 8 Big Gamer, David Wagnerock, and John Allegreza. Thanks so much for the support, guys. You guys are amazing. And for more details about what's on offer on the Patreon, there's a link in the description.